Okay, so we're starting some um, new stuff today. We're going to be looking at triangles again, this time um, non-right triangles. So all of this stuff is traditionally done in degrees. So we'll go to the calculator and spin in radians and we'll put it in degrees. And then we'll talk about um about the material. As I say, we're going to be looking at non-right triangles. The uh, the fancy way of saying that is a And our goal is to be able to solve. Brian was by which we mean find the side lengths and the angles. And there are a couple of tools available to us. Um, the law of sines and the law of cosines. And today, and maybe going into tomorrow, we are going to look at the law of sines. Now, we talk about solving triangles. Um, to solve a triangle, we need some kind of information going into the problem. And the law of signs gets used in basically three situations where we know an angle and we know a side and we know another angle like this. Um, this is abbreviated the ASA case for angle side angle. Um, something that I'd like to mention at this point is that the angles of a triangle add up to 180 degrees. So really, you can think of this as knowing all three of the angles, because the angle that we don't know can be solved in that way. 180 minus alpha minus beta will give us this third angle. So that's one case. The second case, the, sorry, repeating myself, the angle, angle, side case. So again, you know two angles, but this time the side you know is a different side. 
And again, although I just used the phrase, you would know two angles, um, in reality, you can find the third angle without doing any trigonometry, using the fact that the angles add up to 180 degrees. Then the last case, and this case can be tricksome, so we'll talk about it in depth at some point, but it's SSA, side-side angle. So you know a side and you know another side, and then you know this angle. In this last case, <laughs> you can't just, you know, you're only given one angle, so you can't just use the fact that they add up to 180 to get the rest. There's uh, some work to be done here. And this last case is um, has some other issues that we'll discuss. So... Let me state the law of signs. The law of signs is a string of equalities. So let's say there is a triangle and it's got angles alpha, beta, gamma, and sides A, B, and C. Um, that alpha and A are opposite one another, beta and B are opposite one another, and then I guess there's no Greek letter that starts with a C, so we use gamma for the angle that's opposite C. The law of sine says that the sine of alpha divided by A is the sine of beta divided by B is the sine of gamma divided by C. So let's, for a moment, go back to these cases where I said the law of signs is useful. Um, these cases are very specific in the sense that in all of these cases, you know an angle and a side opposite. The angle. So in all of these cases, you can find one of these ratios. Like here, the sign of, if we know what gamma is and we know what C is, we can find the sign of gamma divided by C. It will just be some number. And then if we want to figure out what that side is, for example, we'll set it equal to the sine of alpha divided by that unknown side. Let's um, see this in practice with an ASA angle side angle triangle, let's say that's 98 degrees, this side has a length of 22, and that angle is 43 degrees. 
Uh, going forward, I'm not going to pretend that these triangles will be perfectly to scale. What I will say is that angles that look obtuse in my pictures are intended to be obtuse, and angles that look acute in my pictures are intended to be acute. And that's going to come up when we get to the FSSA case. For now, let's solve this triangle. Let's find the remaining angle. Let's find um, both the missing sides. So as for the remaining angle, we again don't need trigonometry here. We simply need the fact that there are 180 degrees in a triangle. One eighty minus ninety eight minus forty three thirty nine. And you know, I've said our goal is to solve for the angle and the other two sides. And the reason I'm, I'm doing this in a specific order, the reason I found the angle first is that to use the law of sines, we need to have an angle and an opposite side. So finding the angle first, gives us what we need in that sense. Um, so let's find one of the remaining sides. It, it hardly matters what we call it. We'll label it A, and that side can be B then. And the law of sine says, that the sine of 98 degrees over A equals the sine of 39 degrees over 22. And now we can solve for A. And I mean, I guess, in theory, the thing to do would be, you know, to get A by itself so that we can just plug into our calculator the signs and we minimize rounding error, but, but that's kind of a pain. I'm going to go ahead and get these values. So the sign of 98, Again, I went to the calculator and switched to degrees. So the sine of 98 degrees is 0 over here. The sine of 39 degrees over 22 is point zero two nine. I mean, we'll always have some rounding error, I think, keeping three decimal places, 
will be good enough. 0 0.029. And at this point, I mean, the, the numbers are a little but we're really in the sort of pre-algebra stage of things. Multiply both sides by A. Divide both sides by 0 0.029. And now our calculator to the rescue. Um, 0 0.990. divided by 0 0.029. We think this side is about 34.138. And then as for the remaining side, well, you can, you can imagine we're going to just repeat this process, the sign of now 43 and B. equals the sine of 39 over 22. So we already, on our calculator, we already did the right-hand side. Um, on the left, the sine of 43. The sign of 43 is 0 0.682. And we solve for B. Uh, and because we, um, we are very quickly running out of space. I'm going to combine some steps. Point six eight two over zero point zero two nine. Zero to nine, twenty three point five one eight. And we have, um, 
have therefore solved this triangle. Um, a lot of times when you're solving triangles, you're doing it as a preliminary step to something else. Um, like, You have this triangle, but what you're really interested in is this vertical distance. Maybe. So here, we, by creating that vertical line, we've created a right triangle. And this angle, we can figure out. How can we figure it out? What is that angle? Oh, you can take. Oh. 180. Can you take 180 minus 90? Yeah, 90? yeah, exactly right. Um, this whole thing is 180, so 98, thus whatever this angle is has to be 180. And then um, things I could probably just do in my head, but I've never been great at that kind of thing. 82 degrees. And now if we want to know this, well, we've used the law of signs to find the hypotenuse, 23.518. And now you can use right triangle trig. Um, the sine of 82 degrees is the opposite side over the hypotenuse. Multiply both sides. And we find that this unknown, 23.518 times that sign. What did I just share? Ah, the calculator, it's just hanging down at the bottom of my screen. 23.158. Times the sine. It's actually 518. Thank you. 518 times the sine of 82, 23.289. And we'll do some applications either tomorrow or Friday. Um, so we'll do some like concrete applications, probably Wednesday or Friday, where we'll see this kind of thing. But I just wanted to make the point 
that if we have a non-right triangle, the odds are very good that we're going to end up with the law of sines or the law of cosines, which we'll introduce later in the week. Even if you know what we were initially asked for, this distance isn't what the law of sines or the law of cosines give us. The law of sines gave us that distance, and then we used another technique right triangle trig to finish up the problem. So that was angle side angle. I guess I should do um, angle, angle side. But really, there's not going to be a huge amount of difference or any difference. Um, so say we know two angles and we know a side. Um, well, this case is going to work just like the last case in the sense that we can find the vast angle, that unknown angle is 180 minus 47 minus 62. A moment of truth. Yes, uh, that does generate the subtraction symbol. 71 degrees. And at this point, our cases are the same. And the work that we have to do is the same. I mean, if we took the triangle and rotated it a little so that this, uh, if we took it and rotated it um, clockwise so that the sign we know, side we know is on the bottom, Now this problem and the last problem really are identical. So we can finish it out, but we won't um, dwell on it because these two cases are essentially just the same case. Um, maybe actually, maybe I'll just pick one of the sides and we'll just solve for it. And the other side can be an exercise if you want. The, um, we have an angle and an opposite side here. We want information about a side. We know the angle. The sine of 47 degrees over 12 is the sine of 62 degrees over our unknown quantity A.
sine of 47 over 12, point to zero six one. equals, that's a pretty messy zero, but just imagine the sine of 62 eight eight three point eight eight three multiply both sides by a Divide. And get whatever we get, point eight eight three over Eight eight three over point zero six one. Press that enter key. Fourteen point four seven five. Um, and then same with B, but but I want to get on to the last case because the last case has some peculiarities that need discussing. Um, the last case, we only have one angle. SSA. So maybe something like this thirty five degrees eight six. And now, if we wanted to solve for this triangle, well, what can we do? Um, there, there's a pretty specific order that we're going to have to follow. We have an angle and an opposite side. The only other thing we have is this side. So the next thing we find is going to have to be that angle. Once we found this angle, we'll know two angles and we'll be able to find the third angle. Then once we found this third angle, we'll be able to find the opposite side. So this is the order that things have to be done in, but something kind of screwy is going to happen when we find this angle. So the sine of 35 over six, 
is the sine of this unknown angle alpha over eight. Multiply both sides by eight. And now, if we want to know the angle, well, suddenly we're, um, we're needing an inverse trig function. And we could, you know, we could type eight sine 35 over six into our calculator, or we could have typed the sine of 35 into our, over six into our calculator first. I mean, in theory, waiting until the very end is going to reduce rounding error in practice we're not going to have enough rounding error to really worry about. Um, eight sine 35 over six. Let's see, eight, the sine of 35 over 6. We get 49.886. Okay. But something is wrong here. Um, so what I said, I'm not going to, you know, guarantee that everything's perfectly to scale, but at least angles that look obtuse, I will be obtuse. And angles that look acute will be acute is um what I said. And this angle here, therefore, ought to be obtuse, which just on the offside, that anybody doesn't remember these terms, bigger than 90 degrees. Whereas 49.886 is acute. It's less than 90 degrees. And this is something that can happen. In fact, can is the wrong word. It's something that will happen if you're solving an SSA triangle and you have an obtuse angle, the way we've drawn it on the board. Here, to solve this mystery, here's what's going on. We have this triangle. The length of this side is six. We can draw an extension of this triangle so that this side is also six. And this triangle is isosceles. 
meaning that those two angles are going to be the same. And what's happened here, I mean, if you see, this is eight, this is 35 degrees. What's happened is that when we use the law of signs, well, we have that 35 over six, we have this and this six, we have this acute, uh, oops, uh, forgot that I had the eraser selected there. We have this acute angle opposite eight, and the law of signs gave us the acute angle. And this is always going to happen if we have obtuse angles because the arc sign will never, never give an obtuse angle as an answer. So what can we do? Well, here it here we remember maybe our high school geometry. We mentioned that um, an isosceles angle, a triangle, a triangle with two identical sides has identical angles in the base. So what we found is 49.886. We found that angle but that's also the other angle that I pointed an arrow to. It's both angles. This is the angle we actually want. So how should we use that 49.886 to find the angle that we want? Uh, correct, although um, you only do one subtraction because, I mean, here's the 49.886, here's what you want, they make 180 degrees, just the two of them. One thirty point one one four. And now we're on our way to um to solving this triangle. Now we can find the third angle, and once we found all of the angles, we can find the remaining side. Um, we are out of time, or about out of time. This is a very natural place to wrap up, so we'll keep on with this Wednesday, and we'll, we'll look at a few applications and then drop the introduce the law of cosines.